I try to stay away from who's saying what a little bit because you know it, it like you said the band like do I have the bandwidth I was like so anxious like all year yeah. everything about it was just so overstimulating <laughs> like just I just didn't have really any time to process it I'm trying to graduate I'm trying to and graduate like with good marks and yeah. uh you know also stay in the lineup also make sure I'm playing the best so that I can you know make an impression and and uh you know feel like you know i should be here it's like it was a lot and also being away from home for the first time was was another thing and so yeah. uh it, there was a lot of factors that uh probably probably uh, didn't help with the stress levels but i feel like i, I handled it uh, the best i could that was london hoylet of the vancouver giants and you are listening to the up my hockey podcast with jason padola Welcome to Up My Hockey with Jason Podolan, where we deconstruct the NHL journey, discuss what it takes to make it, and have a few laughs along the way. I'm your host, Jason Podolan, a 31st overall draft pick who played 41 NHL games, but thought he was destined for a 1,000. Learn from my story and those of my guests. This is a hockey podcast about reaching your potential. Hello there and welcome back or welcome to the Up My Hockey podcast with Jason Podolan. I am your host, Jason Podolan. And today we are going to be speaking with London Hoylett. He is a forward for the WHL's Vancouver Giants. Uh, just finished his 18-year-old season, his second season in the league. And uh, and I've been wanting to interview London for a while. I'm a big fan of London's. Uh, he came into my world uh, through Instagram, uh, sent me an Instagram message, which we cover a little bit here in the discussion. Uh, but he reached out to me uh, when he wasn't going great. Things weren't going great for him this season. He reached out. He wanted to see if uh, there was some way I could help and support him. And we've been working together ever since. And in the process of working with London, I've got to know him as a young man, um, the hockey player he is, the human he is, the leader that he is. Uh, and there is not much to not like about this young man. Super creative. He's a he's a singer. He's a like a an artist. Uh, he, he goes by Ty T Y Kiddo. Uh, if you want to see what he's doing on uh, Spotify or any of these other music channels, uh, he creates videos. Uh, he's learned how to play the guitar. You know, he's obviously going to bat as a hockey player, and uh, and he's helping out in the community, and he's doing all these things that. Uh, are just, I think, amazing. And I think that he's a great example of uh, of what a hockey player can be and what being a hockey player can mean. And, uh, and yeah, in the process of working with him, knowing his story a little bit and knowing what he's gone through, uh, knowing what it's been like to be with him now over the course of this season and see him not only participate in my Peak Potential Hockey Project, my mindset program for hockey players, but also working with them after the fact of that program being open and having him be a part of my inner circle, uh, which is a group of hockey players from, you know, all ages and, and, uh, and skill levels from all across North America, where we get together every two weeks and, uh, talk about mindset topics and, uh, and support one another. And, and, and I provide personal coaching on that call as well. Uh, I've been able to put London in a position of, you know, leadership often because some of these players are either, uh, wanting to play in the WHL or Junior A, and and many of them are playing U18 Triple, or they're uh, younger players at U15, and and London has just been a great uh, example for them, and uh, and he's able to share his journey, you know, his downs, his his uh, you know his accomplishments, the the trade that uh, that happened this year between the Calgary Hitmen and the Vancouver Giants, and and what he was, you know, the the. The circumstances around that, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts when you get traded as a junior athlete and changing, you know, whether it be your school or your social circle or your, you know, the locker room, the teammate, the province that you're in, the country that you're in. And, um, and he was just been a great resource for, for everything to do with, with the athletes that I work with. And he's been an, an inspiration for me to work with. And, and I just thought that it'd be good to talk about his story. He's also a, a person of colors, um, uh, London's dad is, uh, was from Jamaica. His parents were descendants from Jamaica. So he, he is, uh, you know, as, as he puts it kind of, well, he didn't really put it that way, but a, a little bit of a, of an outsider. He's a unique 
person uh, in the hockey landscape, and and uh, and I felt that that was also an, a good, uh, you know, good reason to to have him on. His story is 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 awesome. He's experiencing hockey uh, through the eyes uh, of a minority. He is in the WHL landscape, trying to be a pro. He's had to earn and work for everything that he's gotten. He's experienced challenges, difficulty that most players his age have not. Uh, yet he's finding ways to get it done. He's finding ways to improve. Uh, and he's also been working with me, which is fun to be able to talk about. An athlete that's been working with me. And I know I do get a lot of questions about what does that look like? What do you do? How does it work? And so, you know, London at times in this conversation talks about uh, working together and how how it's helped him and how it made such a difference for him this year. And um, and yeah, and obviously that's exciting for me to share uh, success stories as well. So uh, I'm really excited to, to share this interview with you, um, London and, and anyone surrounding London uh, who is listening to this. Uh, you know what an all-star you have there in your circle and how fortunate uh, you are to have London in your life. I feel that way when I have a chance to talk to London as well. I feel fortunate that he's a, that he's a part of my circle. And now we're going to share London uh, with the Up My Hockey podcast community. And I think you're going to really enjoy uh, this young man's story. And, uh, and let's... Uh, Let's help me celebrate uh, his successes and and uh, and let's get on with the conversation with London Hoylet. Well, here we are in the off season, unfortunately, but we're in the playoffs. Um, but back home, sitting comfortably in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Welcome to the podcast, London Hoylet. Thanks for having me. Hey, Amen. Love having you. Thanks for agreeing to do this. Uh, I would have mentioned it on the uh, on the intro, but London and I have been working together for. Geez, roughly, what is it now? Is it a year and a half, kind of? Is that what it about is? A, a about a year. About yeah, a year. Yeah, no, a year, right? Because you reached out in, uh, yeah, the beginning of beginning of this season before the trade. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so we've been getting to know each other pretty well, and I thought uh, your story, London, is is super relevant and uh, and something that I think would be interesting for the podcast. And uh, and you're doing what a lot of people who follow me and a lot of the young athletes want to do. So I was like, you know what, let's get somebody on here who's actually doing it right now. And I thought that'd be a great place to start. So um, maybe we can start with, I mean, since you're back in, in, in Winnipeg there, London, let's talk about minor hockey. Like I know a lot of kids right now, we were just, for instance, with my oldest, my 2009, we did the BC cup, right? So it's his Mm -hmm. draft year this year. And, uh, and where were we going to play for his draft year? And what was the best place for him to be? And, uh, you know, all the all the decisions and questions that come up and where did he want to be? Uh, maybe we'll start there with you. Like, what, what was the draft a big thing for you at the time uh, when you were leading into it? Was it something you were thinking about and something you were trying to position yourself for? I think, yeah, the draft, um, I mean, since I was younger, because I had an older brother and uh, my older brother kind of, uh, I was able to watch him and see like how like his friends were getting drafted and and where they were all going. And so when I was younger, like way too young to even be drafted, it was always kind of a goal of mine. Uh, and so uh, I was playing AAA. And then uh, I think for my draft year, me and my my mom, uh, we decided to go to Rink Hockey Academy. Uh, and so I, I went there for uh, for the first year in Bantam and had a pretty good year. Uh, draft came around, name was not called. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a pretty disappointing, uh, uh, you know, moment in time, but I'm, I'm actually really glad that, that it had happened and, and that I kind of learned from that and, and realized that it doesn't, doesn't mean everything, right? I mean, you can make it to, to the league, like without a draft or without being drafted. And, you know, a lot of guys that are drafted haven't played a game yet. So yeah. it's the draft is, is really kind of, uh, it's not really too important to me, especially now. Uh, I mean, even with the NHL draft now, uh, I feel like, you know, I, I'll end up where I'm supposed to be and I'll, I'll try and make sure I, I, I can accomplish my dreams. And, and so that's kind of been the story of my life a little bit. Well, there you go. Um, <clears throat> I know that's something that you definitely identify with. And I think that's a, a great piece of you, meaning, you know, like the guy that's going to overcome the guy that's going to persevere, the guy that's going to continue to get better and, and not go anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so fantastic. But I do think that that's pretty wild. Uh, in the sense of like, let's unpack that a little bit. So you did have, and, and mind you, I, I see on your elite prospects too, which I didn't even know till now. So you were a brick invitational player. So you played in the brick tournament. Yeah. So 
for anyone out there who who uh, is from the states and maybe hasn't heard of this tournament, it's for first year Adams, and it's and it's kind of a bit of a frenzy in some spots, like in that age group. Yeah. Like parents get freaked out about it, players want to play in it. Uh, it's kind of the best of the best of that age, and obviously we're talking about little kids you know really that end up going to it but uh there are a lot of players that do play there you know like Connor bedard plays there and you see these guys that play in the brick tournament and you'll see their little their little videos and they go on to be nhl stars so everybody wants yeah. to be uh you know a part of that tournament so at that age you were obviously a pretty darn good player right and then you were also at the triple a level at u15 so it was something like i always talk about expectations and you know that right like when we <laughs> when we work together and in the calls and stuff and expectations mean a lot your expectation that year in the Bantam draft was rightfully I was going to get drafted. And you had a season where you scored 18 goals in 30 games, which isn't too shabby at all, right? So you even yeah. had some production to back that up. Um, talk about that, like where you were at, like the days before the draft. I'm sure you had some questionnaires or whatever was happening at the time. And then uh, and then the result of it, like walk us through that a bit. Yeah, uh, it was a crazy time. I, I remember getting yeah those invitations or – uh, I guess like those uh, questionnaires and, and that kind of, uh, I kind of even hyped me up a little more cause I was like, Oh, okay. So they see me and uh, I did all those, did every single one I got, tried my hardest, looked presentable. And uh, I was I'm probably sweating through all my shirts there and I was super nervous. And uh, yeah, uh, I remember just going back to like practice and all the boys talking about like what invitations they, or uh, I guess what, questionnaires they got and how many teams have they talked to and uh it was just kind of a, a huge thing because you know it's an important year uh you know for that age group and uh yeah. i think everybody's been waiting for that that year for pretty much ever so yeah. it was uh exciting time for everybody uh, uh yeah well, for, for you what was like was there a team that you thought was going to draft you or did you think that you were going to go in a certain spot or like what what was it like before that day of the draft like what were your what were your thoughts what was going through your head I thought it could just be literally any team that gave me a questionnaire. So every time uh, I remember watching watching the draft, um, I was at my house by myself. My mom was at work, and uh, she let me skip class. And uh, I remember just watching it and like, oh, this team sent me a questionnaire. Maybe maybe this is the one. <laughs> maybe this is the one. And it just kept going, kept going, kept seeing my buddy's names pop up. I said congrats. And, and uh, it was, yeah, it was like, it was a little heartbreaking a little bit, but uh, uh, I remember just, yeah, just how heartbroken I was. And my brother and my mom were kind of also, also kind of trying to console me a little bit because I was, you know, I'm young and uh, I don't think I saw the bigger picture really. And, uh, you know, everybody was telling me like to draft, you know, it isn't everything. And it was, they were definitely right. So right. I think, yeah, that's kind of how that went down. So how'd you pick yourself up? You know I mean, so here's something that you put a lot of time in and, and it does get, it gets way too business-like too young, right? Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know why the WHL picks uh, when they do, they should give these, you, you, you guys another year to mature, I think, but they do what they do. And so now you're 14 years old or maybe just turned 15 years old and, and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're waiting away from school in this house. You're, you're wanting these things to happen. You feel like you got kicked in the guts. Like what was, what was that transition those next few days like? uh just like trying to how do i put this i guess i was trying to kind of rethink like rethink the way or like think of it in a different type of way trying to flip it into a positive and i kind of just let it like fuel me a lot i think i was like you know i'm gonna use this this anger and this this rage while i'm out there and like prove prove to to everybody that you know i am a good player and i I deserve a chance, and I think that kind of just stuck throughout the rest of my career, and right. um, that's kind of just become my identity. I feel like I love it. Yeah, because I mean, it can, as we've talked about numerous times, it can mean whatever you want it to mean at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. um, it can be it can be a reason to go away and to not think that you can be a player, or it can be a reason that's really going to solidify um you know your identity and and that's going to be a commitment to you to to get even better right to to double down on kind of your idea of what you can do uh <clears throat> which which is really powerful and and for anyone out there listening like it is moments and we talk about this lots with with the, with the guys that I work with it's it's the moments like those little moments those micro moments and how we 
the perspective we apply to them and and how we come through those moments is really the key pieces of the whole nine yards right like it's it is the key piece so you you having that response and building that resilience and 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 building up that that character piece of no i'm not going anywhere right if anything i'm just going to be i'm going to be more relentless i'm going to be more uh committed i'm going to be more dedicated uh that now has served you to get to where you are right uh but there's lots of kids that probably don't hear their name called and they just think oh it's not my day and it's, this isn't my this isn't my thing i'm going to go whatever right i'm going to go do whatever yeah. now um so good on you to do that um because a dream shouldn't be stopped by something like that and i say to anyone like anyone it doesn't matter like the draft really doesn't matter like the next day either you're proving them right or either you're proving them wrong right you know i mean it's just it's just a snapshot it's a moment in time when you're 14 15 years old it's a long way away from a finished product uh but with that so you 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 decide to take that piece You, you have you have your time to mull it over you're like okay i'm gonna go I'm going all in here. What did that next year or two years like? Like, how did you end up on Win- uh, Calgary's list? Like, walk us through that piece for everyone out there who maybe not may maybe not hear their name called here coming uh, coming in a month. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, COVID COVID kind of threw a wrench in a lot of things. Uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the players uh, with the Rink Hockey Academy, and I think we at that time we were the only ones allowed to skate uh, in all of Winnipeg. So uh, that that just knowing that kind of made me realize how like fortunate I was to even be able to be skating and maybe use this time to try and get ahead a little bit. Uh, so we were like all divided. It was crazy. Like there were three sections in the, in the rink and you could only have like two at a time and one in the middle. And then it was, it was a lot going on, but uh, I remember, yeah, just still practicing throughout all of uh, COVID that year. Uh, I think that would be U 17 or mm-hmm. U 16. Yeah. And um, yeah, pretty much uh, I just kept working. Uh, and then we had our U18 year and uh, we were able to uh, go to the max tournament. That's what it was. So we went to the max tournament and uh, uh, had a really good tournament. Um, I guess the scout had seen me there. Uh, he uh, liked what he saw and uh, he kind of gave me an invitation to uh, Calgary. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a, a weird time to be a high schooler, um, uh, you know, yeah. with all of, all of COVID and stuff, but I, yeah, I was very fortunate to be able to stay on my skates. So I think Sweet. that really helped. Yeah. So, so you have a good circle, well, I guess it's called the circle K now, but it used to be called the max forever. So you have a good tournament. Obviously there's a tons of eyeballs, uh, there and someone, so did you get on the list at that point or do you just get invited to camp? I just got invited to camp. Okay, yeah. so not so you did not listed, but invited to camp. So you're mm-hmm. you're you're an underdog again there, right? So you so you show up uh, to Calgary. Is that the twenty two twenty three season now where you showed up unlisted to camp and end up making the team? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So, that, so walk me was... walk me through that walk me through that training camp and what that looked like. Oh, so okay, so going going to training camp, uh, I went with my mom. Uh, we flew there and. Uh, I just remember how nervous I was. I was like, this is my shot here. This is kind of it's do or die for me here. And um, I remember going there, getting into like orientation and everything and seeing everybody there. They all looked so big. Everyone looked like ready to go and like professional. And and uh, there I am just like, what am I doing here kind of thing. And I, I remember just kind of playing like I had nothing to lose that entire camp because I really didn't. I had nothing to lose. I was so loose, probably the loosest I've, I've felt in a while. I remember just, yeah, I scored like two hat tricks, just doing stuff I just didn't know I could do. Just <laughs> just trying stuff, just having fun. And I remember I thought I was going to be going to Verdon because I was drafted by Verdon that, the year pr- prior. Uh, so I, I was wearing my visor already, trying to like, you know, I was like, okay, I'll practice this. And then when I go to Verdon, it'll it will, it will be like second nature, right? So yeah. uh, everyone was excited to have a visor. Uh, so I put mine on. And I remember going to Calgary and I was the only guy not like drafted by them, like with a visor on. And so <laughs> I was like, why does this guy have a visor on? And and I was like, well, I don't know. I'm just doing my thing. So yeah, it was it was a good camp. And then I remember having my meeting with uh, Steve Hamilton and and uh, Jeff Shemowith, they kind of just dropped a bomb on me a little bit and were like, hey, we'd like to like keep you to 
to the next round here. Like we really like what you saw, what we saw, and uh, they decided to keep me uh, practicing as like a practice player. Uh, they didn't really promise me anything, but they said, you know, if you keep keep playing the way you're playing, like you can stay throughout the entire year. I was started actually getting put into games. Yeah, it was it was a huge huge shell shock for me and my family. I don't think my mom expected to go home alone uh, after camp, so that was uh, pretty crazy. Oh my gosh! Like I do love that. I mean, it gets I, I got I got hair stand up in the back of my neck right now because like that's that's the stuff is like I don't know. I mean, it's hard to do first of all, right? Like it it is. It, it's hard to do to to go to a camp, not be on a list even, let alone not being drafted, and to make a team to make that much of an impact uh to those in charge to keep you is like kudos man like that's super super exciting and uh and haven't looked back since you know like two years in the league now and uh and and a big piece of the puzzle there with vancouver once you got traded um like what's what's the message there i mean i i heard the message but if you were to speak directly to to kids right now that are you know wanting to be in the whl or to make a team and maybe they're not being watched or being you know recruited let's say you know like what what's what's the message to them i would say find what you're good at and make it your identity a little bit uh i i was told you know i have a i have a motor so i was like okay well i'm gonna lean into that i'm gonna make sure i'm able to have that type of motor throughout an entirety of the game and and i kind of just leaned into my work ethic a little bit and uh it, it you know it kind of separated me from from a lot of those players that were probably at the camp expecting to make it and uh I think that's that would be my my biggest piece is just kind of know what you're good at. Obviously, try and expand your game, but you know, uh, you know, we're we're always trying to expand our game. So, yeah. just be like, yeah, stick to stick to what you're good at. Know who you are as a player, and and uh, you know, you'll end up where you should be. Yeah, what great advice. A um, couple things I want to unpack there. So you said motor. I know what you mean by that, but I don't know if everybody out there would meet would know what you mean by that. So what 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 is the, define what the motor means? always going right uh i feel like uh my past in sports in general kind of uh kind of fed into that a lot um basketball track was a huge one cross country was a huge one for me so i've kind of just developed like this this stamina and uh i mean i'm already a fast guy so uh you know with my stamina and everything uh you won't ever see me going 85 percent 75 percent 90 percent that's just not i don't know how to do that yet maybe i should slow my game down sometimes but you're gonna get what you're gonna get from me right now and and that's just 100 percent as as much as i can so uh that's kind of what i mean by motor is you know you're not gonna work, outwork me and uh i'm gonna get that that freaking pop you know what i mean so i love it yeah. No, I love it. And, and, and geez, I just talk with players about that so much. Like there, there's very, very few players that can't elevate their compete level. Yeah. And it's such an interesting way to, to be noticed. And it's such a, I shouldn't say easy. Cause it's hard. It's hard to do. Like it's hard to play that way. And that's why maybe guys don't play it, but you don't know. You're not going to have the puck every shift. You know, you're not going to have a scoring chance every shift, but you can compete your ass off every shift. You know, like in those areas where you are around the puck and you're F1 in those in those board battles, like on the four check. And, and that as you're watching a game as an evaluator, as a scout, as somebody who's a decision maker, that's noticed. Right. Oh, yeah. And do you as an, I mean, in in the broad scheme of things as a team. Do you need guys like that? hundred percent. Yes. Right. It, like, yes. A hundred percent. Because that difference. elevates everybody else's effort. That elevates everybody else's compete level. It's it's one of those things that's super contagious. So, um, yeah, the fact that, that you made it on, on that, and again, like obviously you're you're more than that, but it's it's awesome for you to hear, to you to understand that, and to know, you know, like this is what I am, this is what I'm about, and this is this is what I offer. And I think for anyone out there listening who's a player, um, it is key uh, to mm -hmm. to London's uh, advice. There is to know what you're great at and to really really bring that to the table. You know I mean, that's a, that's a, for sure. Was there, was there any point in, so now you're there as a practice player, you start to get your way in the line. I mean, you played 61 games, you know, I think it's a 68 game season. So you, you know, you weren't sitting on the sidelines for too long. And once you established yourself, you were there. Was there any kind of aha moment or a breakthrough for you where it's like you, 
you felt like you belonged, like you felt like you were a WHL player or you, you were just, you know, or was that not the case? So you were just trying to be there all year kind of deal. Yeah. A little bit of that. I mean, it was a little easier, I guess, to feel not comfortable, but like kind of be like, okay, yeah, I'm here after like the trade deadline, I'd yeah. say. Uh, but, you know, I've kind of always felt like, you know, it's, it's been tough to feel like I belong. Uh, not like, most of uh, the players I've ever played with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just different. So it's, it's always kind of been a thing. And, you know, I've, I've never felt bothered by it uh, ever. Uh, in, in fact, sometimes I embrace it and uh, I know that I'm different, but uh, I feel like I believe that I should be there. And yeah. to me, that's all that matters. So uh, I didn't really try and focus on whether or not, you know, my teammates thought I should be there or, what uh what anyone else really thought so yeah i knew i should have been there I, yeah. i've that's kind of been my things good i want to get into that feel different i'm just gonna like for, for me why i asked that question is because like i i never really felt that way until my first pro year and really actually my first pro year when i got traded to toronto like I, I felt a part of the process because I was drafted by Florida. You know, I, I kind of knew that I was going to, you know, be in the AHL most likely if I didn't make the NHL. And then they called me up and I knew the veterans there and been a part of camps. And, you know, I just kind of felt like that was my trajectory and felt comfortable enough. Not necessarily super comfortable on the ice in NHL games, but still comfortable on the ice to be like, OK, you know, like this is part of my my, my plan, my, my journey. But then when I got traded and I was in Toronto. I just really didn't feel like I belonged all of a sudden. Like I was like, holy, I'm playing with Matt Sundin and Curtis Joseph and Ty Domi's my roommate. And, uh, you know, Wendell Clark's my winger. And, and I've, you know, never been in the city before. And it was just like, I felt like an outsider, you know, and I felt like kind of an imposter at times, even though I was, you know, obviously working hard and doing those things. But it, it's, it's an interesting way to play the game, right? Like when you don't necessarily feel comfortable and it could be something that, helps you because you are maybe working that much harder or it can be something that makes you feel alienated and you don't play to your best mm -hmm. ability um i always felt that as i went on in my career like the more new places that i went to and yes you become an, a veteran and, and you know you have your own kind of swagger about you the more experience you get but the team environment really does matter when it comes to that as far as like you know you mm -hmm. saying you feel different um but it's different feeling different yet also being accepted right? Like, do, yeah. did you feel that Calgary did a good job of, uh, you know, welcoming you in there? Were they a part of that transition for you? Uh, yeah, for the most part, I think like, yeah, a lot of, especially the older guys, uh, they were really kind of the ones that, you know, showed like, yeah, you should be here. And like, you know, they appreciated my work ethic and, and they really let me know, like, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, I thought that was the coolest thing ever just hearing that from like a guy like Tyson Galloway, who's, uh, you know, he was a Blues prospect, and uh, now he's with the like, Calgary Flames uh, as a prospect. So uh, when I was, you know, obviously like 15, 16 years old, uh, hearing that from him, I, it kind of, it, it made me feel good. I was like, okay, yeah. great, good to know. And so I was able to play, uh, you know, the way I knew I could play. And, um, yeah, I think that helps a lot when, when you have guys on the team to, you know, talk to and ask questions and, and, and just, yeah, just feel a part of, of the community so it was fun yeah it was yeah it's fun. validating too right and i think there's a lesson there and i know it is because you're an ambassador to the sport and i know you're you're a great teammate but like having having that type of feedback knowing the impact that it had on you as a young man like understanding now that you as a third year guy coming in the league and even i remember you telling a story that it was a guy that just got traded there and you made sure that you were at the rink to welcome him to the team right late at night after practice like those those types of gestures those types of move uh moves right is is a piece of that acceptance, a piece of that team culture, something that you've experienced before. And now you can give to, to those that are coming in who are the young guys on campus. For sure. Yeah. The, um, and that's a big piece of the puzzle too. Um, and London, I know we spoke personally on that, but just kind of for the audience, like that idea of providing that type of a culture, that type of an atmosphere and environment for a team not everybody on the team was, I assume, was waiting there for that guy this year, correct? Yeah, no. Okay. Not everybody. So, and I'm not saying everybody should be, but the, the idea here is, is that there's some people do go to that next level because they understand that human piece that they want, the, that they want this guy to feel comfortable. And if there's not any London Hoylets on the team, that's not a great team, 
right? Like you need guys that are going to do that. And so for everyone listening, it's like, don't underestimate the value of caring, right? And of being a good person to recognizing those moments because that goes a long way. I guarantee you that guy, whoever that was, remembers that gesture, remembers that moment and is very, very appreciative of it. And now maybe he moved, pays it forward when he has the opportunity to do it in the future. And I've heard that time and time again, like from, from uh, the guys that I've interviewed and the stories that I've heard is like, those are the things guys remember. Not their first shift in a new team or whatever, but they remember who did what, who invited them to dinner, right? Who, who, took, uh, who took the time to introduce themselves. So I just wanted to congratulate you and rec- let everyone else know that those, those pieces uh, do, do mean a lot. Just take a short break from the episode to say thank you, uh, not only to the listeners, but also to the sponsors. Um, not only the sponsors for my circle, the Up My Hockey Circle, um, that help get the programs going, that help get the jerseys paid for for the parents to try and keep costs low, to help people come to events, um, but also to all the sponsors out there who have helped minor sports in whatever capacity, and especially if you've helped minor hockey in, in some capacity. Uh, we can't do it without you. Um, we can't do it without the corporate dollars that are coming in. It's already an expensive enough game as it is, and and everything that you do at the grassroots level, corporate sponsors out there, we thank you. Uh, so yeah, a couple shout-outs to my sponsors, fh and Lawyers here locally, um, helping with the with the jersey kits this year. Uh, it's a local law firm out of out of Kelowna, one of the one of the partners, his sons plays in my team. So big thank you for them to coming out and support. And also to Iron Ghost Construction, who not only is helping my spring team, but is also going to be backing my UMH 68 tournament as the major sponsor. Uh, I really wanted to uh, get involved with somebody like-minded, somebody that was purpose-driven, that wanted to support com- uh, not only the community, but also hockey and young players in general. And, uh, and that is actually exactly what we have with Iron Ghost Construction. Uh, it's a Western-based uh, construction company. Uh, the founder, uh, Mr. McKeechney, is, uh, is, uh, has hockey in his roots. He was a Vernon uh, Viper stick boy back in the day and, and, and grew up playing and, and wants to be involved. His son is, uh, is a hockey player and, and just really wants to be involved and give back. So uh, love having them involved. And it's, uh, it's great to be involved with, with, with people who, you know, understand the sport and want to give back to a sport that has given them so much. So I can totally relate to that. Uh, if you are anyone in the construction business in the oil patch and in, in forestry or, or need a site built iron ghost as somebody on the Western, um, in the Western side of Canada here that you should be looking at, uh, especially if you're listening to this podcast and if you're a decision maker, because it's great to work with, uh, people in that network. And I'd love to be able to get iron ghost, uh, some type of a job from the association here with, uh, without my hockey in the podcast. So uh, more to follow with that. But thank you not only to my sponsors, but like I said, to everyone out there that is being involved. I really do think that that probably goes underappreciated. And for you athletes out there that are old enough to be listening to this um, and to understand it, that there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes for allowing you to play. And whether that's at a junior level or whether that's a minor hockey or rep team level, uh, there are people that are paying, you know, their hard earned dollars into this to make it more accessible for you. So uh, a super mature thing would be to seek out who those people are, uh, who has been involved, a phone call or a letter or a card or just a thank you would be amazing. Uh, I think it is a good piece of gratitude training to to have your athletes do that if this is their mom or a dad to to go out there and to understand what it is that they're being thankful for, what it is that they're doing, uh, what it allows them to how it greatly you know it increases their experience in 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 the sport and to uh, to recognize it and to say thanks. So here's my thanks, my my recognition of gratitude to my sponsors and to those out there. Uh, love what you do. Keep doing it. We couldn't do it without you. Now back to the conversation with London. I want to go back now. We talked about your uh, scouting uh, report from Elite Prospects, which to me, I just kind of like hit me in the face. So you were a kid that didn't necessarily know you or maybe didn't expect to be in the WHL, right? Like you were going to a camp, you were undrafted, you weren't even listed. You had all these guys probably ahead of you on the depth chart. Yet all of a sudden now you make the WHL. Now you're playing. And not only now are you playing, but now it's your NHL draft year and people are actually watching you for the greatest league in the world. Like that's a pretty yeah. big trend <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, right? Crazy. Yeah, that was uh that was an exciting, exciting year. So 
I mean, you know, going to a new school now too, also just in Calgary and uh, playing in front of, you know, playing in the Saddle Dome in general, practicing even was like insane. I mean, just seeing all those seats, like how do you pack this thing out? And then, and then don't even get me started about like, you know, the big games, like when Bedard came, Bedard came packed, sold out. I was like, I felt like I was already there. I was already at the yeah. NHL level. It felt like that was a crazy, like, just feeling and like you can feel like the screaming and rumbles just in your chest when you step on the ice and uh it was like a lot it was a, it was a lot to take in, in in one year especially so i feel like i'm proud of the way i embraced that kind of challenge in terms of you know playing in front of that many people or playing against high level players like bedard and and uh it was yeah it was a crazy year crazy yeah. so did you have like the bandwidth to like, I don't know, like, I don't know that's the right way to put it, but I mean, yeah. So you're, you're, you mean, you're trying to be effective in on the team. You're trying to just stay there, right? Like all these things. And yet there are people in there that are scouting you because it is your draft. You're like, were you, were you aware of that? Like that happening, like that whole thing going on and watching where you, are you a guy that watches your reports or seeing if you're getting, you know, who's saying what? Um, I try to stay away from who's saying what a little bit. Cause you know, it, it, like you said, the band, like, do I have the bandwidth? I was like, so anxious, like all year, right. yeah. everything about it was just so overstimulating. <laughs> like just, I just didn't have really any time to process it. I'm trying to graduate. I'm trying to, and graduate like with good marks and, yeah. uh, you know, also stay in the lineup. Also make sure I'm playing the best so that I can, you know, make an impression and, and, uh, you know, feel like you know i should be here it's like it was a lot and also being away from home for the first time was was another thing and so yeah. uh it, there was a lot of factors that uh probably probably uh, didn't help with the stress levels but i feel like i i handled it uh, the best i could um and yeah i feel like yeah that's kind of how that that went down yeah man there is a lot i mean i if i try and talk about that like the the preparation for that you can't really prepare for what you don't know but with yeah. with some mentorship and with some conversations and with some tools, like you you can in a sense too, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, but there, there's massive transitions, like you said. School uh, is is a huge one. Like the the schedule that that WHL team keeps, right? The pressures of staying in the lineup, the pressures of being scouted, but for the NHL, you know, like, uh, maintaining your your physical health, right? Like making sure that you're on top of your food and your and your eating, and it's mm -hmm. like there's a lot that goes on there, especially for a lot of kids. Well, vast majority, it's the first time that they're not with mom and dad, right? They're out of their own house, and now they're kind of, you know, taking care of themselves. So the fact that uh, you're able to do that, it makes you grow up quick. I mean, there's there's it's oh, yeah. A, yeah, it's a school of life for sure, right there. Uh, smacking you in the face and then yeah. sometimes it gets pretty tough like obviously it's not that you're always things are going great sometimes you're fighting to stay in the lineup maybe you're a healthy scratch all these things are going going on and maybe we can start there because that was like so the start of your second year you had a good first year um i think by all counts right you I mean you got in the lineup you ended up scoring uh, double digits and goals um you pretty much had a had a spot and then your second year comes around and and things maybe don't get off the way you wanted it to, to, to get off. So maybe we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got to camp and this was like my first time being at camp as a returning player. So that was a little bit of a different feel. And um, uh, I thought I was ready. I feel like I, I was ready. And uh, I know they, they brought in a lot of young guys and, and they, you know, they were probably, uh, they had in mind that they, they wanted to rebuild this year. And um I found I felt like I was was really kind of just put on the back burner a little bit. Um, I wasn't I wasn't producing either. Uh, I feel like that that uh, kind of threw me off my game a little bit. Just uh, and then also like the pressure of like, what if I never score again? Like kind of like everything like that. So it was it was very dis a disappointing start to my year. I was like, well, I gotta get something going. So. So you started off in the lineup, like were you were you in the lineup for for opening day? Yeah, opening day I was in the lineup for for the first first like month, and then it kind of started dropping off a lot. Uh, like maybe every second game I was scratched. So did uh, your minutes start to go down first? Oh yeah, yeah, my minutes started to go down, and I was, you know, sitting on the bench for maybe seven minutes, ten minutes at a time, and then going back out there and trying to stay up to pace and. 
and that, you know, that's difficult, but you know, you got to learn how to do that. So I, I took that as a challenge and, yeah. um, uh, and then, yeah, so it just started being like, you show up to the rink and your name's not on the lineup sheet. So yeah, got to go do your workout and, and kind of just, uh, yeah, go back upstairs and watch the game, which was, you know, it was tough, especially as a second year guy who, you know, had a good first year. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was not easy. All right. So maybe that's a good segue, like to, so you're, again, expectations are everything. Second year guy, you feel you got the first year under your belt, you're showing up at camp. And I know you're a guy that didn't, uh, I, I, you weren't comfortable, let's say, right? Like, it wasn't like you were taking things for granted. I'm sure like you did the work and you're ready to go and things don't start off the way you want them to. Minutes mm-hmm. start to go down. Now you're out of the lineup. Now you're, now you're starting to maybe question yourself and maybe that's when I get an email from you potentially uh what was going through your head at that point like what were you looking for was it happens chance that you found me or like how did that whole thing happen completely by chance uh i was i was starting to like uh, implement like a meditation into my game and so i'd look up on youtube like pre-game meditations and so i was on the bus and uh after one of the meditation videos were done uh it kind of just kept going and it went to the next video and it was your podcast so uh I, I was just listening to it i was like what like well, who is this guy like what he just said like in this podcast like uh, i used that that game and you know i got my first point of the year and i was like wow like maybe i should try and reach out to him and uh, i remember just sitting in bed that night and being like yeah like who knows maybe he'll answer and i was like okay i'll just ask him for you know a little bit of a of advice and then and then you had brought up that you know you had a, a whole course and i was like oh wow so uh, I, I, I remember telling you, like, I would love to, I really don't have the funds to, and you, you, you gave me the, the peak potential course, um, for free so that I could kind of use it to my advantage and, and kind of salvage my year a lot, which I'm so thankful for. That was, that probably changed, you know, the whole trajectory, trajectory of, of my year. And yeah, it was just awesome. Well, Yeah. Thanks for, I mean, thanks for bringing that. I didn't mean for you to bring that up, but yeah, like London, for anyone listening, like, I don't know, like what the, how we project on social media or whatever the case may be, right? Like, I don't know how hard that was for London to reach out to me or what the second thoughts were. Or maybe if he ever doubted that maybe he should or he shouldn't, but he did. And I can't remember exactly the message. Um, but I was like, I'm impressed. Anytime an athlete reaches out, anytime an athlete ha- has one, the courage, I guess, to do it to the, let's call it the vulnerability uh, to do it, right? Like, hey, I'm struggling right now, or, you know, I, I'm looking for this or looking for that. Uh, that tells me that this kid's driven. That tells me that he wants to be a player. And if you're a coach of <laughs> any substance at all, that has to fire you up. because That's exactly who you who you want to help, right? So so London, so when you did that, I was like, okay, so this kid uh, obviously wants it. He's obviously in a tough spot. And so I did offer you like that, um, that little meeting, right? So we had a consultant. I, I don't think I've ever told you this. So um, to me, it's a little bit funny. Maybe it's not funny to you. I think it will be, but uh, I didn't have a chance to look up who you were, or what was going on, right? Like I just mm-hmm. knew that you played in the WHL and I was like, okay, like, well, we'll have this meeting. And then when the camera came on, we're doing the Zoom call. And I was not expecting you to look the way you look like at all, right? Like WHL yeah. player, I was thinking he's going to have white, he's going to be a mullet, you know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And there you are with dreads. And I'm like, oh, London, how's it going? It's so like, there was this internal yeah. like kind of shock for me just because of like how, like our expectations again, right? Like for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, I just want to bring that up. And because we said we we're going to talk about race a little bit, obviously that didn't, doesn't matter to me that, you, that what color you are. But how has that ever been like something that you've recognized as being helpful or has hurt you or like the, the, the whole piece of being a minority in a game that's predominantly white? Uh, I think I think it's just always been kind of, uh, you know, just to be aware of. So I've always kind of looked out for that. My dad played. Uh, it was a bit, way different time back then. So he was playing uh, in the MJHL and he eventually quit. Uh, because it was just too much Um, Mm -hmm. and so you know him having kids and his kids wanting to play hockey was I think a little a little strange for him and a little hard hard for him to watch but he was like 
very supportive and he just wanted us to know like just to look out for it so if you ever see anything or hear anything like just let him know and and so uh no thankfully when i was younger i didn't hear anything i mean it was it was like i would you know kids don't know how to be racist or 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 discriminatory i i mean so uh just growing up it was it was all normal i just knew i looked different so it was it wasn't anything like that i mean i met a lot of my best friends um but i feel like as i got older and older and as i keep you know getting older and uh you start to you start to see a little uh you know differences like in in the way people you know talk to you uh maybe like you you don't really or they don't expect you to know as much about you know hockey as they think you do mm. and uh they you know they kind of talk to you like you know you should listen to me because clearly you don't know what you're doing and then <laughs> so it's it's a lot of that kind of just uh, like the what's the word it's kind of like backhanded compliments and stuff like that so, you know you kind of you end up kind of just shove it aside because you know it's kind of yeah. been been the thing so um yeah it's never it never deterred me from anything uh but uh it's definitely you know it's definitely getting better i feel like we're actually starting to acknowledge it a lot more these yeah. days but uh it's not it's not it's not gone gone for sure yet until right. you know we really we really push it how um is there anything and and i'm not asking you to have any of the solutions but like if there is a if there is a problem uh, whatever that problem is like is is there a solution that you see or is there a way is there a way forward to, to help make things better um well uh you can i mean there's you have a support system uh with all the every team you're on right so i would say yeah. first thing is tell your coach let him know and uh you know the adults and you know it's their job to you know take action when when action is needed uh yeah. so you know uh i know some people you know it's kind of it's hard because you also like you're also like uh some people think maybe it's annoying that you know you know we're, we're here causing a ruckus and and you know it's like they <laughs> almost treat us like like you're you're kind of lucky to play the sport which i am i'm yeah. like we're all lucky to play the sport but yeah it doesn't make me any different than you right so yeah uh it's kind of yeah it's always been like you're kind of lucky to be here that's kind of how it felt so um yeah i i i feel like yeah just tell somebody if you know something said or and and yeah just tell somebody do you think do, i mean i think that's super important yeah i mean like <laughs> stand up right have, have have the courage to stand up hopefully somebody around you has the courage to stand up if anyone hears it. i mean i think that's the most important piece right mm -hmm. like that I mean, you shouldn't have to say anything to be quite honest like hopefully anyone else that's there within earshot someone's going to say something to that person Absolutely. whatever that's that's having having the issue uh when i when we talk about these things and we're talking about through this lens of hockey right now and uh just want your opinion on this do, do you think like if there is something that happens let's say in a hockey environment do you feel that it's a hockey issue or is that still a social issue that is now just a piece of hockey Ooh, uh i'd say I'd say it has to be like a social issue still i feel like you know that's it all it's it can't just be it's not every hockey player right it's not every right. person in the world right it's a social issue like just the way either they grew up or or uh, you know what they've been taught uh or what they've seen on tv or whatever so it's i, I feel like i don't know uh I don't think it's like necessarily a hockey issue. I feel like hockey's doing a much better job than yeah. than they did when my dad played. Uh, right. So like, that's something I can appreciate. Uh, there's been a lot of awareness this year uh, and last year even yeah. um, towards all of that. But uh, I feel like, you know, socially, like even just, I know we're in Canada, but like even in like America and stuff, you see, you see this crazy stuff happening all the time. So it's, yeah. It's it's like yeah I'd say it's more of a, a social issue right and I just say that just because like it, it's it, it's it's I try to be as honest as we can with every conversation we have right mm -hmm. so if there is issues that are hockey related issues like that would be specific to hockey then yes definitely hockey needs to do something about that um, my experience of hearing it you know what I mean from a third party seeing it to me it's just like people as to your point that have been you know that that have that as part of their construct and whether you meet them on the sidewalk or whether you meet them in a in a dressing room the, the experience 
for you, I would think would be likely similar, right? Yeah. But the fact that hockey is around it now, it doesn't make it necessarily that hockey is doing anything wrong. It's just society needs to be doing better. I think yeah. in general. And I think I, it seems to me like it is getting better. And uh, I hope that your experience is, uh, geez, continues to get better because that's definitely obviously the way we want it to be. Take a quick break from the conversation with London just to remind everyone out there that Up My Hockey can come to an association, an academy, or a team near you for the 2024 25 season. Uh, I've been having many conversations. The fall looks like it's going to be fully booked. Uh, but by all means, I will throw out the feelers there uh, for anyone else that thinks they want to be involved. This is where I think Up My Hockey can make the most impact for the most amount of players, which is exactly why I am doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm obviously all in in this department, this mindset training, the personal development aspect of being your best hockey player is absolutely crucial in this day and age. And if I can get involved with associations or academies or teams where these players can grow with up my hockey programming throughout their time with that association, now we are talking because this is something that builds. This isn't a one and done, read a book, have an hour workshop and think that it's all figured out. This is something that you can learn from 13, 14, 15. Go through the levels, the U13, U15, U17, U18 levels. And as you graduate a program, you would step into a new program without my hockey. Uh, that is the idea. Um, that is that is the offer. That is the service. So yes, we do do one teams only, and we've been very successful with that. So if you are a coach or a general manager or, you know, uh, uh, somebody that is a decision maker for a team, a competitive team, and you want to have a difference, make a difference next year in your season and start off the season with some team building 2.0 uh, that's going to get your team off on the right foot, then by all means, we definitely do do that. But if you are part of a bigger thing, if you are a rep team in uh, an association somewhere, whether that be in Canada or the United States, and you think, hey, this is something that we definitely need. We should have this for our competitive program. This will give us a competitive advantage. Um, and you want Up My Hockey to be a part of all of those teams and have your son or daughter be able to take in the benefits of that, then by all means, reach out. Let me know that you're interested. And that is something that I would be happy uh, to get in a conversation about. Okay? So, yes, upmyhockey.com that's a contact form uh, on the website www.upmyhockey.com there's a contact form there or my direct email is jason at upmyhockey.com if you want to get a hold of me and discuss what mindset training might look like for your team or for your academy now let's get back to the conversation with london hoylet You talked about your father there. Maybe it's a good time to chat about him a little bit and the impact that he had. And he's not with us anymore. And I don't know anything to do with that story. Uh, but I know he had a big, a big impact to you in a few of the stories that you have told me. So uh, oh, yeah. maybe we should talk oh, about yeah. dad. Um, so my dad, he was born in England. Uh, his parents are Jamaican. So that's what I am. I'm Jamaican. And uh, they moved to Selkirk, Manitoba. Uh, kind of the middle of nowhere. But uh, you right. know, he started kind of playing hockey because that's what kids in Selkirk did back then, especially. And uh, so we started playing hockey and uh, eventually, you know, uh, made it to the MJHL. And, uh, that, you know, once he got to that higher level, not so friendly, he decided to, uh, you know, play for uh, the college basketball team, uh, View of M. Uh, so he started playing college basketball. I remember the stories you tell us of people going just to warm up, just to watch him dunk. And then they'd leave when the game starts. And then uh, uh, I know uh, sometime after that, while he's still in uh, university, uh, the CFL coach or the Bison's coach, I guess, uh, had asked him if he wanted to play football for them. So uh, he uh, said yes, and then he quit, should quit basketball and then uh, goes to play for the CFL uh, and goes play uh, for the Bombers. And uh, he played there for a few years and then, uh, you know, uh, he, you know, he had us and, uh, just telling us all those stories were like, wow, we can literally do whatever we want, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we tried every sport under the book. Um, basketball was big for me. I, that was kind of what I was most into, uh, beginning of my life. My brother was hockey. My sister's still playing basketball and she's 
better than me by quite a long shot now. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I think just sports in general was pushed so heavily. And but like you know, then again, if you're gonna play it, you better work your ass off. Yeah, we're not we're not busting our butts here with three three kids to just watch you be lazy. So you know, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it 100. percent That's kind of the way he he operated. And so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how. Uh, our upbringing was, um, yeah, I have a little sister, Mia and the older brother, Jalen. And so, yeah, it was, it was a lot of sports, a lot of running around for my parents. And, um, yeah, eventually, uh, I, everyone kind of stuck to one sport. Uh, my sister was, you know, basketball, I was hockey and my brother was hockey as well. Yeah. And, uh, that was when, uh, you know, my parents started having a little more trouble, uh, like problems, um. I was in like my triple a first triple a tryouts and uh yeah uh, my dad i guess said uh had uh depression uh he had gone into depression so uh he he started drinking pretty heavily and then uh, uh i remember just going to like him coming at my games and you know he was always a big big guy big guy like biggest guy in the room always obviously football player right he's so yeah so he's always huge and uh, I just remember seeing him like pretty much just deteriorate, like just so skinny. And it was like hard to watch him from from playing, trying to trying to make a team, Triple uh, A team, my first Triple A team ever. And just seeing him in the stands like that doesn't even look like the guy that's been watching me for right. all these years. And it was it was it was kind of yeah, it was it was heartbreaking. Yeah, it was a really tough time. Uh, yeah, my dad eventually, like we all moved out and uh, my dad was living in Charleswood and I was living in St. James or in Winnipeg or Westwood. And, uh, you know, we'd see him here and there. And uh, I remember coming back from my first year uh, of RHA, uh, the Rink Hockey Academy. I was coming back from uh, a trip and uh, it, was, it had just been my 15th birthday. And uh, I was going to go see all my family and my mom picked me up and you know, we dropped my buddy off uh, at his place and then um, she said that you know there are police at our house and I told them I had to go get you and uh, we were just like why the hell are there police at our door and and I remember getting that news and it was just probably like obviously the worst news you can ever hear so uh, that was uh, that was really tough because it was also my draft year at that point too so uh, that kind of just you know, I, I didn't want to miss that much hockey. I think I we, we were going back to Notre Dame to play Notre Dame yeah. uh, right after that, like that weekend. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I'm going. So I went and I played and, uh, you know, all the boys, you know, it was, yeah, they, it was just, it, they, they saved me, like, seriously. I mean, I, I don't know if I could have just stayed at home and like, I don't know what I would have done. The only thing I really knew was to just go play hockey. And, right. uh, you know, my teammates were just awesome. They were just awesome. So, uh, what a great yeah, I had a, yeah, it was, it was a crazy, crazy year. Well, it's tough, man. So, uh, yeah, this, so this larger than life, you know, man, dad, right? The superhero mm-hmm. kind of, right? And then and then to see that, that's uh, that's yeah. tough for anyone at any age. I couldn't imagine being being your age and uh, and still having to have the season. and. I guess it's I'm grateful for you that you had hockey and I'm, I'm sure, you know, you are as well to, to have that memory as, as, as be a good one. What's, uh, what's your favorite memory of dad? Huh. Uh, probably, uh, he was really into Bob Marley. So me and him, would, uh, we had like a patio and he would, uh, he'd be like cooking something like barbecuing. He, uh, he was a good cook. And, uh, I, I was just be playing basketball and showing him the new dunk. I just learned on the tiny, tiny net. And uh, yeah, that, I feel like just that, uh, that one is a core memory for me, uh, as it is for like pretty much everyone else in my family. Uh, everybody just, you know, we're all gonna get matching tattoos with like Bob Marley songs on it. And this is gonna be, it's gonna be funny, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of just him. He was just so fun yeah. and, like, all the time. So uh, yeah, I, I just feel like that was, that was a huge memory for me. What was the best way to make dad proud? I feel like just, you know, do what he instilled in me, which is, you know, work hard, 
leave leave it all out there. He used to always say, like, before, when I was young, when I was playing, he said, if you work hard, you'll get a gumball after the game. So I'd always come off the ice, like, did I work hard? And he's like, yeah, and so I got a gumball. And I feel like I'm just chasing that gumball still. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I feel like that's that's a big, uh, big, big thing for me. Oh man, yeah, that's uh, sounds like there was a lot of there's a lot of goodness in him, a lot of things to 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 look up to, and I'm sure that you're you're uh, you're looking on those every day and and still trying to make them proud. I know fathers are are a big influence, and uh, and it sounds like you had a you had a superhero of a dad, so that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as as far as the season, if we get back to the season and uh, and us having our our time and 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 you went through this program. Uh, which, by the way, is the peak potential mindset program is what is what uh, London's talking about. It's uh, you know the mindset training that I call it for for players. And uh, and so London, as as to remind you, he's in a spot now where you know he's in a position where he reaches out to somebody he's never heard before, uh, someone that he listened to on a, on a YouTube short or a reel, and he ends up getting inside this course. Now, talk maybe not necessarily what's in the course, but how did it help you? And what were the results of that? It, uh, you know, it gave you all the tools, everything you ever needed to like focus on, on and highlight things like in your mental, the mental side of the game. So, uh, I mean, even outside of that, it was, uh, how many days a week was it? Like three, uh, five, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, even just like to myself, I was like, Hey, well, I'm going to, I'm not going to miss a day even just being being there and, and doing it every single morning, that already kind of got me into like a, yeah, we're doing this mindset. Like right. we're, we're sticking to it. And, and then, uh, you know, just going through the course every day, I was able to go to practice and, you know, I put it on again, like in the radio, on the radio, on my car, and uh, I could focus on it that day. And like, whatever you were talking about, I'd focus on that day and, and practice those skills and, uh, I, yeah, it definitely made a huge difference, even in the way I just like presented myself, like at, at the rink. You know, I kind of right. focused on you know the brighter side of things. It gave me something to be excited about, and uh, I think you know even now that I'm not on that team, it still shows up on on the team I'm at. Like I'll be able be able to have that forever. So right. uh, uh, the skills you'll learn and, and the peak potential will will get you farther than than I feel like people would think. Like the mental side of hockey is like the least side of the least practice side of hockey that there is. So um, to be able to get a chance to practice those things and, 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 and learn, it was, uh, it was a game changer, I'd say. Oh, that's great to hear that. I mean, it made that much of an impact. And, and the thing is, I don't know exactly what it was and we don't have to get into the idea, but like just for, for those listening. So, you know, being out of the lineup, trying when, and then when you do get in the lineup, so let, let, let's just talk a, a little bit about what that presents like, right? And you've seen it like for players, like that can present in a lot of ways. It can present as frustrated when players get to the rink. It can, it can present as uh, sad. It can present uh, angry. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can show up because there is emotions that are involved in that, right? Like you're not chosen to be in the lineup. Now, how does that affect your practice? How does that affect you with your teammates? How does that affect your approach when you're not at the rink, right? Are you going to bed at the right time? Are you buying in? Like, what are you, what are you doing in those aspects? And then if we even cut that and say, okay, now you're in the lineup and now you're not getting many minutes, we need to really have a mindset that allows us to try and be brave and bold when we're on the ice, right? And to play our mm -hmm. best so we can get more minutes. Like, there's a lot of non-hockey-related discussions in that, correct? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, yeah, uh, being able to reframe a lot of things and a lot of my thinking um, and kind of flip it into uh, like, all right, for every single time you're out on this ice, you're going to you're going to play with courage or you're going to play, you know, uh, f careless or free, I guess, more than the mm -hmm. word until uh, kind of getting rid of that uh, that fear of failure. Uh, that was a big one was the fear of making mistakes uh, that the, the peak potential process kind of gave me a gave me the tools to flip that and turn it into like well i'm gonna go out and play with courage and and uh it, it did help me for sure right yeah it was fun to, to be uh yeah just to be a part of that and just to see you kind of work your way back in the lineup to see you end up getting 
you know, getting your goal, the Teddy bear toss game was awesome. And, uh, uh, and then the trade, like, so we talked a little bit about that too. Like the trade is, is that's a big deal, right? Getting traded. And again, like there's, there's a hockey player that gets traded, but there's also a human being attached to that hockey player that also gets traded. Right. Yeah. So all those skills come over to a new team and a new dressing room. But then there's a person that is having to change their life. That's going to have to adapt to new teammates. That's going to have to fit in, figure out all the things that are required of them. And, uh, you know, and, and hopefully earn the trust of, of this new coach. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, that our, that our work together was pretty invaluable through that process as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, even just to be able to like ask questions about like, you know, how was your experience getting traded? Cause uh, you know, I didn't know how to go about it really. Um, right. And uh, yeah, your advice was awesome. Uh, I got there and uh, all the boys introduced themselves to me, which was awesome. And uh, I felt like I, uh, I felt like I belonged almost right off the jump. And uh, they, uh, they made that really easy for me. Uh, even just, yeah, being, being like, I was playing a lot more there than I, than I had played my entire career. So uh, that kind of was like, uh, like kind of, all right, now's your time. Go, go play with courage, play with courage. So I, I was really trying to kind of save my my year almost, and uh, I was I was able to kind of bounce back from you know the start that we might have had, and uh, you know it's not in it's in the past, but I definitely learned from it, and that's not happening again. Right, and that's kind of going to be you know my mindset, especially this off season is I'm going to be ready, but I'm I'm going to be a way better player and just yeah. a more complete player. So. Yeah. Good for you, man. Like, what a season, hey? Like, all those, like, all the ups and downs, and then to be traded to get more yeah. ice to, to end up in a, on a in a playoff series, like, super, super cool. And and one of the things I'll reiterate, reiterate that I did say to London, and I don't know if this is exactly what he's referring to, but in some of our discussions, and it does apply to anyone listening, like, anytime you go to a new team, and whether that means uh, a trade or whether that means you're going to into, into camp and it's a new environment, you can be whoever it is you want to be. And I think like, like for me, like that's like you are setting that standard and you are creating your brand is one of the things that I call it sometimes, right? Like who mm-hmm. is London Hoyland, right? Like what are you, what are you about? What is your identity? You know, we talked about that as a hockey player, right? Being a motor guy, but what does that look like in the locker room, right? What does that look like for your practice habits? What does it look like for the way you carry yourself away from the rink? Um, and, and it's really, I think it's super empowering. Because you have a clearer picture of what you are, what you stand for, and being really unapologetic and being kind of non-negotiable about those things and being consistent with them from there on out. It's like it, it really is like it, it can be a new life and it can be a new like a new chance. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, I don't know if you took that and ran with it, but I do recommend that to oh, anyone. Yes, like when you're going in there is like just be the best version of you and understand what that is. Right. Because we all have strengths. And we all have weaknesses and there's things that we can change. I think we're always a work in progress. But if you have a really clear understanding of what that is, like what the what the brand is, the person is that's walking into that room, I think that's a really structured way to start and probably gives you the best chance for success moving forward. Yeah, first 100 percent. And I mean, that even just like having that you say that kind of just gave me so much like internal freedom. And, and I, uh, I just pretty much decided like, I'm going to be a player that's going to be hard to take out of the lineup. I'm going to be reliable. I'm going to, I'm going to work hard every shift and, and uh, I'm going to play the way I know I can play. And, uh, that kind of carried throughout the season and only got better really. So uh, awesome. yeah, it was good. So you mentioned about next year. So we're going to be hitting your third third uh, year here in in the league. Um, Nineteen year old year. So two years of eligibility left. Yeah. Uh, where are London Hoylet's site? Just in the big picture. Let's say the 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 five year runway. Are are you are you wanting to be paid to be a hockey player at some point? Hundred <laughs> percent. That would be nice. Uh, I feel like obviously this year is an important year. Uh, I want to go out this year and and make a huge impact and. Uh, you know, whether or not that leads to a camp invite or something, uh, I want to be able to be a 20 in the league. Uh, that's kind of more of my, my goal. I feel like it's more realistic for me. Um, and then, you know, it's, obviously I'm going to be trying to get as, as good as I can get. Uh, hopefully I could crack a roster spot or, or uh, an invite even uh, by my 20 year. And uh, whether that's AHL or, or, or <laughs> hopefully, I mean, NHL would be cool. So uh, I feel like that's kind of my my goals right now, and that's what I'm working to. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I had a billet brother my first year in Calgary named Zach Funk. Um, I'm sure you've heard of that guy. That yeah. Guy now. Yeah. Uh, I remember he was, yeah, he got traded from from our team. Uh, but me and him still kind of kept in touch a little bit. And uh, just watching, like, him year, year to year was just completely different every year. Like, he was really improving, like, at, like, group, like crazy amounts. And uh, so uh, he... He had, uh, you know, cracked a spot, uh, uh, or at least a prospect uh, signing uh, with uh, Capitals. So yeah, with Washington. He's from cool. Vernon, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Nice guy. Super nice guy. So yeah. Yeah. Scored sixty this year. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a crazy season. Yeah. So yeah. No. It's yeah. Fantastic. And so when you when you because of the time of year it is, so your season's done. Like how. How do you craft what it is you're going to try and accomplish here in the next four months to be ready and to be that better player? Uh, what is your what does your plan look like? Uh, this year, I want to I want to gain a little bit of weight, um, muscle mass. Uh, I'm a, I'm 190, uh, so not bad. But if I get to like 200 and uh, you know be stronger, a little bit stronger on my feet, um, I feel like it'll make a, guys think a little twice about uh, you know maybe playing the body on me that much and. Uh, uh, and, you know, being able to protect myself, but then also being able to be confidently, you know, as as uh, much of an energy guy as I am, right, going into those corners. And, you know, I can go into into them with a lot more confidence, knowing that, you know, I'm going to run through this guy. And um, I feel like uh, a lot of it would also be, um, you know, my stick handling. Um, this year, I've, I mean, second half of the year, especially, I, you know, you gave me that freedom to, you know, just be the player I want to be and, you know. Yeah. I grew up with, you know, I was known as like a skill guy a little bit. So, you know, it's not that I didn't have any skill, but um, it was more of the mental block to allow myself to feel comfortable just like, you know, performing those those moves and getting around guys. And right. um, that was uh, that was something I was working on pretty much all, all this year it was just it was just, yeah, just giving myself the permission. And so this year I'm going to, you know, work really hard at it so that I feel more comfortable giving myself permission and, you know, use, use my, use my skill too. And, you know, put my work ethic uh, into play and, and pretty much just, uh, you know, become, become the player and I can be also my speed. I mean, my skating, it's pretty much everything I want to, you know, improve on, but uh, sure. I, I've got a very busy schedule this summer. So we're yeah. going to, we're going to be getting to work. I believe it. Uh, how's the communication made with the coaching staff there? Like, are they a part of the off-season plan and, and you know, what, what they see in you, what they believe you to be able to become and how you're going to do that? Uh, yeah. So, you know, they were very happy uh, with my exit meeting. Um, uh, we had uh, our uh, trainer give me a bunch of tips for this off-season. He said he'd like me to be a little heavier too. So uh, that's uh, something that I'm, I'm going to work on. And uh, our skills coach actually uh, in, in uh, Vancouver is – was my skills coach in the rink hockey academy and he still oh, works okay. there so uh in the summers he works there so me and him are going to do some one-on-one -on -one skates uh he's seth jarvis's brother actually oh okay uh, yeah so uh he's a, yeah he's a great great skills coach um so working with him is going to be nice um yeah my, and you know the coaches you know they gave me a lot of you know things to, to work on as well uh like head coach uh manny he uh he said, you know, if I could keep my motor going for uh, even longer shifts, I feel like I was getting a little bit, you know, more tired by, you know, the end of my shift. And, you know, if I was able to do that for, you know, a longer period of time, obviously that'd be ideal. So yeah. uh, I'm going to work on my stamina a lot and, um, yeah, just try and Love it. try and do what they said. So good. Hopefully. That's a good part. I mean, it's for everyone out there. I mean, it, it's good. It is good to have, uh, you know, your own idea of a plan, but it's also great to collaborate, right? What do other people see mm -hmm. and what do they think? And, uh, you know, and to build a plan together to, to become the most complete player you can be. So it sounds like you're going to be busy at work. And, and for those uh, listening at home, uh, London's, London's got a pretty cool story. We won't spend a ton of time on it, but I do want to mention it, that he is also Ty Kiddo in the uh in the music space and 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 records and has some great songs and and has some videos and so i know that i don't know how much of that uh, takes up uh, as far as being creative and, and of your time but uh obviously it must be a great creative outlet for you to probably take your mind maybe off the game at some times and gives you a little mm -hmm. bit of reprieve there yeah for sure uh i just got a bunch of i just got a new keyboard it's very sad me but i got a new keyboard now and uh writing a lot of music but um yeah, whenever I get a chance to just 
chill out, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. So it's not a lot of just sitting around watching TV, which is, you know, the way, you know, I like it. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's, it's nice. It's fun. It's good to be home also in like the comfort of my own home. Uh, again, not making music in my Bill family's house, probably just disrupting everybody. So right. it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be back and with all my music stuff and it's, you know, it's a fun thing to do away from, you know, the ring. So. Sweet. Well, I, uh, we'll wrap it up. I just wanted to, I mean, I know I've told you before, but, uh, you and you're an awesome example in a lot of ways. And I think that you're doing, you're doing yourself justice. You're doing the game justice. I think you're giving back to the game in great ways and you're an awesome ambassador. Uh, and dad would definitely be proud and I'm happy to be, to be working with you partner. Um, one of the things I didn't mention, I have, we have this group program called the inner circle where I meet with graduates of the peak potential pro uh, project that, you know, want to continue on working together. And it's, uh, it's a collaborative, right? Like, I mean, I'm definitely hosting it, but the, the players are involved uh, as well in supporting each other. And, and London, I, you've been an absolute awesome addition in there. And I know a lot of the younger guys that are in the group look up to you and, and having that perspective and being able to give back is something that I want you to continue to embrace, right? Like, yeah, uh, sure. thank that's, you. that's a big piece of it. So thank you for being you. Um, thank you for being a great example. And uh, thank you for taking the time today to share your story with us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the conversation with London. Uh, London is a fantastic dude. I'm just an awesome man, super talented in so many ways. And, uh, and as we talked about in that conversation, his dedication, his perseverance, his commitment, his motor, as we talked about, are all distinguishing factors that make London, London. And that piece, that piece of what London is, is going to not only help him and already has as a hockey player, but that's going to help him in whatever it is he decides to do with his life, whether that be in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And that is one thing that I can definitely relate to him is that once you figure out kind of your own secret sauce and what makes you grow, what makes you find life in, in, interesting and, and, uh, and what makes, and what drives you like that doesn't change. Like whether it's me doing this podcast, me helping athletes or whether it was me as a hockey player or me even in the hotel industry, there was just a curiosity and a drive and a dedication for what I was doing that was just more a part of who I was than it is what I was doing. And I totally see that in London and he's building that type of a foundation within him right now that obviously started before he started working with me. It was there with him. It was an identifying feature. It was something that he took pride in. But the beauty of it is, is that we can always add, right? We can always even increase our standards. And that was one of the things that we talked about, uh, London and I, when he was, when he was moving or actually when he was first, when he was trying to get back in the lineup, it was like, he was a guy, he wasn't pouting. He wasn't not working, but could he even add more? Could he even add more of that element? Could he get there a little bit earlier? Could he show the coach that this was something that he was committed to, that he wasn't going away, that he was willing to get better every day, even though he wasn't in the lineup and be that good example and be that good teammate. And he did. He turned up the volume. He ended up working his way through that, working his way into the lineup, working his way into a guy that was valued by another organization, was able to get traded. And then he stepped into that organization and he did it again. He, he had his standard for what he was about, what he was going to commit to, what he was going to show. And, um, and this is going to continue to grow. And that's the type of piece when, when sometimes when I speak about mindset, it, it's, it's such a big word because it means so many things. Automatically people think about probably visualization and we think about, um, you know, like the, the mental approach to recovery from mistakes and these types of things. But I believe mindset is also a choice when it comes to our personal traits and our characteristics of how we want to show up, understanding who we are as people, understanding what our strengths are, what maybe our character weaknesses are. And being able to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm willing to either increase this, I'm willing to practice this, I'm willing to um, go to bat to ensure that I'm not going to get in my own way when it comes to this. I'm going to continually try to find the best version of myself in order to chase my goals and dreams. And, uh, and that's powerful. That's really powerful. 
I mean, London's essentially in the league because of those personal traits. Uh, the fact that he also happens to be a really darn good hockey player is also a bonus. But you do not show up as an undrafted, unlisted 17-year-old to the WHL and make a hockey team unless you are massively driven, unless you are willing to outwork, outperform, and be more dedicated than somebody else. Now, these are skills that people don't necessarily think about. And that's why I think it was such an awesome time to be able to have a conversation with London is because for many of you players listening out there, that is where your focus should be on the personal intangibles that you can increase, the standards that you can change, the things that you can evolve into that are going to help you become as much of a hockey player as who your power skating coach is. So London, thank you so much for being so vulnerable. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for listening to me and to London. And I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I really enjoyed that conversation. And until next time, make sure you play hard and keep your head up.